13 Engines Kids, uh, the album is called Perpetual Motion Machine, and uh, outstanding cover by the way, where did you guys uh, dig that up? That uh, is from, uh, it's a photo uh, that we found in the uh, Toronto Reference Library, we were looking for photos of, of solar flares, and we found that one, and it's, uh, it's taken from the Sacramento Peak Observatory, I believe. And uh, we had to pay ten dollars for the rights to use it. By the way, <laughs> expenses. Eh? Once you get into this big, big uh, album recording the, deal, the little loop is like about thirty thousand kilometers tall, and it's uh, it's like the gases are feeding back in a in a magnetic loop. So <laughs> it all it all worked. It's a nice looking package. Um, the album was actually produced by yourself, uh, John Critchley, and um, you did it at Le Studio, Morin Heights, Quebec. Um, what was that experience like? Especially all the big guns that they've had in and out of that studio. Oh, well, it was so inspiring to see uh, the Corey Hart gold records on the wall. I mean, it really, it made us want to work harder to achieve, you know? Sure. But, uh, but it was a, it's a really nice studio, and we were there uh, last summer, so it was, you know, a nice time to be there. And, uh, and the studio has a nice balance of, you know, old equipment and new equipment, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, some... Some older equipment has different sounds that you can't get with some of the newer stuff, and uh, yeah, it was a good studio. It was a good time. You were quoted as saying in uh, Spotlight magazine that um, you like to do an album, then once it's released, sit back, listen to it, and then improve on something that you, you may not have liked. Um, what was the case in, in uh, bringing a new approach to this album? Well, it was kind of... Uh, I think we went on a process of our first three albums. We did our first one, and then what we decided from that one was we wanted to try and have a more organic sound, less mucking around in the studio, which we did. And then the third one, we wanted to try and do it, you know, basically as live as possible, which we did, and we kind of took it as far as we wanted. And this time, we wanted to do a lot of stuff in the studio. We wanted to do a lot of overdubbing, you know, try, you know, effects, and, you know, spend a lot of time, you know, Right. screwing around in the studio, you know, and, and trying to also, with all the overdubbing, to try and get a thicker, heavier sound, you know, and okay. that's where we, what we were reacting to, probably. Um, Mike Robbins, as a guitar player, um, how was this approach for you? Did you like it? Were you satisfied with the sound that uh, was put to tape? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm always satisfied. I mean, I think recording is, is a fairly easy easy uh, easy process I mean you, you go in there and, just, and you do your thing it's, it's I, f I find it a lot easier than than playing live I mean mm -hmm. you know because if you, if, you, if you screw up you can just do it again you know? <laughs> whereas live you're at the mercy again. and again <laughs> and and I mean I, I think you know I think we've always had a fairly clear vision of of, of, of how our sound should be you know what you be for me were you in the past You'll have to excuse me I didn't think that this was the last College radio, how important is that to you guys in, in terms of airplay and uh, publicity and support? Um, do you have any comments on that? I, I think it's really important for us. Um, I mean, the one thing uh, that's good about college radio is it's not... Uh, it's less formatted and it's more open-minded. And if they do play your record, um, you have a better chance that they're playing it because they like it and they think it's worthwhile, you know, and sometimes other stations, more commercial stations, you're not really sure why they're playing it. And, and often they don't play it at all, so you don't even have to worry about it, you know? But it's uh, the hidden agenda of, of corporate rock, you know, it's, <laughs> it's beyond us. <laughs> you just never know. Uh, let's talk about the live show because you guys have been uh, touted as being a great live band. Um, what can we look forward to, to seeing um, for instance, guest performers. Well, tonight, as as maybe as maybe the people out in TV land can hear, we have Anne Bourne. She's tuning up her cello right now, and uh, she played on two songs on the album "Moment of Clarity" and uh, "Lift You Up." The two songs she played. And adding a haunting, really neat sound with with that instrument. Yeah, it's cool. I love the cello. 
And uh, so she's playing with us tonight, and it's kind of a, like a one-off kind of thing. She played with us last night. We had a, a record release party in Toronto, and we played the album, you know, from start to finish. And then she came and played two songs with us, and she was able to come out tonight. But uh, generally, when we play live, we just try to make as much noise as possible and have as much fun as possible. Great. Well, uh, good luck to 13 Engines, and hope you guys do real well with uh, Perpetual Motion Machine. Thanks for being on the Metal Mike Show. Great.